Hi folks, welcome back for more trig fun. Today we're looking at double angle identities uh, and the proofs of these identities are probably beyond the scope of what we need to do in the course. But if you're really interested, you can check out the Khan Academy's video for proving the sine and cosine addition formulas, uh, which are kind of more ser full service versions of the double angle identities. But essentially what this double angle identity here is saying is that if you had the sine of say 68 degrees, it should be equal to 2 times the sine of 34 degrees and the cosine of 34 degrees. All that stuff multiplied together. Um, so if we have this kind of form, 2 sine of an angle, cos of an angle, that's equivalent to sine of double that angle. Let's head to the calculator to see if this property is true. So I'm in degree mode, I'm going to type in sine 68. It wouldn't actually matter whether I'm in degree or uh, radian mode. It's 2 sine 34, cos 34. At this point, this is just magic, but they clearly are the same, and they're going to be the same for any angle. Similarly, we're going to have this identity for cosine. So, I mean, is cos of 68 equal to the cosine squared of 34 minus the cosine or the sine squared of 34 degrees? Let's find out. Cos 68 is that. I need some extra brackets here, so I'll type cos of 34, close, close, squared, minus bracket sine of 34, close, close, squared. You can see they are the same number. So these are true identities. Uh, sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. Cos of 2 theta is equal to cos squared minus sine squared of theta. Now it turns out that the cosine one has a bunch of different ways that you can write it, uh, and that's because of the Pythagorean identity that we already know. The Pythagorean identity is this, uh, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. That's different from what's underlined in green up there. So what we get from Pythagorean identity is a couple of ways to rearrange um, that, uh, that cos 2 theta formula, because from Pythagorean identity, we can rearrange it and say, oh, sine squared, that's just 1 minus cos squared. If we get cos squared on its own, that's just 1 minus sine squared. So we could make some of those substitutions. Cos 2 theta is going to be cos squared theta minus brackets. Instead of sine squared, we can say 1 minus cos squared theta. Or we can rearrange this to say 2 cos squared theta minus 1. By the same token, we could take this one and replace the cos squared theta. So cos squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta, so we get 1 minus sine squared theta minus another sine squared theta. Oh my gosh, that's 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So there are actually three forms of the cos 2 theta. I'm going to get rid of all the scrap work that I did and just write the results. So the three forms of cos 2 theta are cos squared minus sine squared, 2 cos squared theta minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. All of these will work because of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. And also we know our other uh, identities, which are sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1, and that tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. Now you might be saying, well, that's a lot to memorize. It's all in your formula booklet. All the forms of the cos 2 theta and the one form of the sine 2 theta and Pythagorean identity and the tangent identity. So we can answer some sort of neat problems that involve one trig ratio and trying to sleuth out what some other ones are. In this first one, we know that sine is 3 fifths, that the angle is between pi over 2 and pi, so it's in the second quadrant. And in part A, we're asked to find cos theta. So this is going to be the identity that we need. Not a double angle identity, because this didn't have a double angle. It's an identity that has sine, which we know, and cosine, which we want. Okay, so 3 fifths squared plus cos squared theta is going to equal 1, or 9 twenty fifths. And I chose numbers that are going to work out pretty nicely, but if you have radicals, then that's fine. 
Uh, 1 is just 20, not 22, but 25 over 25. So let's write it that way because I'm going to have to move some stuff around. I'm going to subtract 9 25ths from both sides. And that's going to give me cos squared theta is equal to 16 over 25. And then I'd square root both sides. So I'd get cos theta is the square root of 16 over the square root of 25. That's 4 over 5. It might be positive or negative, but we're in quadrant 2. Okay, we've established that because of the angle itself. So cos theta must be negative. Having that information is going to power the rest of the questions that we have. The rest of them should crumble fairly easily. The next part asks us to find tan theta. So tan theta, we have this identity is just sine theta over cos theta. Cos theta. So it would be sine theta, which is 3 fifths, all over cos theta, which is 4 fifths. And we can go through the process of flipping and multiplying. It is worth noting, though, that if the denominators are the same in those nested fractions, then they'll just sort of divide themselves out. So we'll end up with them gone. But we can show that as a process over here, that the fives will be gone, so we'll have negative 3 quarters. And the only time we had to worry about a plus or minus was in part A, because we had to square root. For the rest of this, we're just going to be able to follow the algebra. So in part C, it says sine 2 theta. If it says sine 2 theta, head to that double angle formula. That's what it's there for. So it's 2 sine theta cos theta. should give us the correct answer here. 2 times 3 fifths times negative 4 fifths. We multiply this through. 2 times 3 times negative 4. Remember, every number is secretly a fraction over 1. So that's going to give us negative 24 over 25. And we just take its word because the formula is, it, it, you can prove it. It's correct. The next one we're asked for cos 2 theta. And you have three options. You have this identity. You have this identity. And you have this identity. So you get to take your pick, um, and they'll all give you the same answer. However, in this case, the best one to pick is this one, because it only relies on information that was given to you, not on information that you generated earlier in earlier steps. So they should give you follow-through marks if you botch it and use some uh, wrong data in, say, A or B. But it's best to just use what they gave you. So 1 minus 2 times sine squared, so that's 3 fifths squared. Let's figure that out. 1 times 2 minus 2 times 9 over 25. Okay. Or 1 minus 18 over 25. I'm going to re rewrite that 1 as 25 over 25. And we get a result of 7 over 25. The last one asks us for tan 2 theta. And you may notice that they don't give us a formula for tan 2 theta. There is one, but we don't really need it. We can just go sine of 2 theta over cosine of 2 theta. Okay. So we found sine of 2 theta. It's negative 24 over 25. That's all divided by 7 over 25. You can flip and multiply. You can just cross out the denominators because they're going to be the same. Um, either way, you're going to get negative 24 over 7 for the value of tan theta. So in this question, all we did was took some basic information about one trig ratio, and we were able to expand and find a whole bunch of other ones. We did have to be careful that we were in the second quadrant with the first angle. Though when we double that angle, we're actually not quite sure what quadrant we're in. And, and we don't have to care either. The algebra, or the technique of subbing in the values, is just going to take care of it. You could think about it after the fact and say, hold on, we're in a quadrant where sine is negative. The cosine is positive, so the doubled angle must be in quadrant 4. But we don't really need to know that. This brings us to double angle identities that are in equations. So equations with different angles, let's just be, just 
just be ridiculously general about this and say, are bad or are tricky. Now, if you have your GDC, of course, you'll solve graphically. But if an equation uses a theta and a two theta, then there's a 97% chance you need to use a double angle formula. There's a reason that they put a sine two theta in there. So if you see sine two theta, you should be suspicious, especially if there's also a sine of theta. In this one over here, we've got x's, but same deal. We've got a sine two x and a cos x. I mean, to me, this gets my spidey senses tingling. I'm thinking, hold on, there's a sine two x and there's an identity for sine two x in the formula booklet. Maybe I should just use it. Now that turns it into a weirder equation or a more complicated looking equation, but at least it's one in terms of a single angle. And this is one that we're going to be able to factor. So we'll make one side zero. This is sort of a type of quadratic-y thing because it's got sine x times cos x. Once I write it like this, I can factor a greatest common factor out of it, of cos x. Basically, it's saying something like this, 2xy minus y. Well, if you had that, you could factor it like this, 2x minus 1. So in this one, we're going to factor out cosine of x. And that will leave us with 2 sine x minus 1. Those are each elementary equations that I can solve. Right? Cos x equals 0, and 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. Okay. Cos is 0. Let's just draw the circle. Cos is going to be 0 here and here at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. This one will have uh, sine x equals a half when we rearrange it. And so that means we'll have to find a reference angle. And it's just 30 degrees, or pi over 3, or pi over 6, rather. Pi over 6 is you'd have this point that says root 3 over 2, 1 half. And so the reference angle is pi over 6. Let's polish this off and decide on our quadrants. Sine is positive, so it could be in either of these quadrants. There's no funny business with weird angles anymore, because we've got it just down to a single regular angle. And there's no funny business with domain. So the answers here are going to be pi over 6. Sorry, let me do this properly so we can see color-coded which one's which. Pi over 6. And we'd end up with this one here that's pi minus pi over 6, or 5 pi over 6. All four of those are solutions. Okay, so let's put them in a box. We use the double angle identity to get it down to a single angle. If they're all in terms of a double angle, it's no big problem. So the last one has a cos 2 theta in it, and cos 2 theta has three definitions. It has this one, cos theta minus sine squared theta, sorry, cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. It has two cos squared theta minus one, and one minus two sine squared theta. And really, you can use any of them, but some are going to be more helpful in some situations than others. So if we put that first one in, we'd have cos squared theta minus sine squared theta equals sine theta. That looks like a big mess to me. I have two different ratios. I've got two squared terms. If I did the other one, 1 minus 2 cos squared theta, and threw it in, well, then we'd have a cos and a sine. The best one to choose here is probably the sine one. So let me get rid of what I already drew here. And I'll use that third definition that in place of cos 2 theta, I'll just write 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, because that's the definition of the identity. Okay, it's equal to cos 2 theta I was about to write, but in this equation, it's equal to sine theta. Okay, so I just replace this with this stuff over here. And now we have a quadratic. I can move stuff around. I really like my quadratics to have a positive leading coefficient. So I'm going to move the 1 over to the right side. And I'll move, or sorry, move the sine squared over to the right side and the 1 over to the right side. 
at this point I'm thinking, okay, that's just like having a 2y squared plus y minus 1 kind of equation, and I can factor that either by guess and test or by um, decomposition would factor like this. So for my sine one, maybe we have two sine theta minus one and sine theta plus one. And I can foil that out and show that it is correct. It's essentially what we started with in the step above. Each of these are going to be equations that need to be solved. So elementary equation here, one says sine theta equals a half. And again, I'm down to regular angles. No funny business there. And this one says sine theta plus one equals zero. So sine theta would be equal to negative one. We just established that the reference angle for sine of a half is pi over six. So that's from the quarter circle or however you want to organize your trig values. It's gonna be in these two quadrants. There we go, pi over six, pi over six. And so we have answers here of pi over six. Theta is pi over six. We have an answer of pi minus pi over six. So that would be five pi over six. And we also have an answer that comes from the other equation. Now, again, this is one where we've got a sine value of 0, 1, or negative 1. Sine is negative 1 right here, which would be at 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2s. So theta is 3 pi over 2. Those are our three solutions in this case. And don't get hung up on estimating the number of solutions before you solve. We solve and However many solutions there are, that's how many there are. I hope this has been helpful. Um, take a look at page 522 for numbers 1 to 7. You'll find some stuff that involves uh, double angle formulas there. You want to make sure as you're doing these that you have the identities in front of you, ideally from your formula booklet. Good luck with the material, folks, and take care.